This is kind of an experiment that I made last year. Last year was the first year that I've truly experimented with uh, worm vermicomposting and redworms. And we had a small worm bin that we were feeding kind of the way most people do with food scraps from the kitchen and stuff. But one of the things I was really excited about with the red worms is to figure out a way to utilize them as a manure composting system because I am not really a fan of hot composting and turning piles and that sort of thing. A lot of people are really into that, but it's, it's never been something I'm really good at or succeeded with very much. Um, and I'm looking in the next few years, I'm gonna to have to change the way I'm managing the housing for star in particular, because as oxen become mature, you need to limit their access to forage, particularly fresh pasture. If I let him have free access to pasture when he's five, six years old, he's gonna become obese and that will shorten his lifespan. So I'm gonna to need to start yarding him and I need to have a way to manage the manure so that I can keep his yard from becoming kind of a mucky mess. And so I want to sort of start working on some kind of an outdoor manure storage and composting system that will enable me to uh, convert the manure into usable compost at a reasonable amount of labor and time. So, um, so this is basically an outdoor bed and I, I split our worm bin in two after it had built up to a rather high population and what I put last fall is I had this old wooden cold frame uh, box and I set it here and I dug about an 18 inch deep trench in the soil and set the soil to either side and then filled the bottom of the trench with some finished compost and some old leaves and then basically I just went out into the pasture and collected manure and you know and then I put the worms in here and so this basically is just you can see there's some corn stalks and this is manure and if I can find some worms and then it just they overwintered out here um, all winter and now of course I can't find any of them where'd they go there they are. They've gone down. So right at the moment, they're kind of down deep. But when it as it gets warmer, they're going to filter back up through the pile. And these are not red worms that have uh these are not red worms that um hatched this year. These are overwintered successfully here in this compost and manure mix. Um, so that was really great to see that these, you know, red wigglers, Asenia, Fetida, could overwinter successfully, you know, in an outdoor bed in, you know, the northeastern United States with basically just a minimal amount of mulch, you know. And it, this wasn't the coldest winter we've ever had, but, um, you know, that just makes me feel like I can sort of build as large of a worm housing structure that I need to uh, utilize the manure that um, Star will be producing every day. And I think it should be possible to build up the population to such an extent that I can feed sort of in bands, you know, like the day's worth of cattle manure would just go in one section and then I'd move on and they'll just utilize it, you know, and then you can just sort of keep repeating that cycle. That's my idea. I haven't, you know, got that completely figured out, but like this was just, I was really happy to see how cold hardy they are and how easy it is to keep them in an outdoor situation. So, yeah. So this was our first 
worm bin that we had going last year when our friend gave us the worms initially and this is just like your basic Rubbermaid tub and when I split this colony and made the outdoor bin I just kind of left the other side of it here in the greenhouse I had intended to bring it in to the house to like do worm composting over the winter but we didn't end up doing it and this thing froze solid last year and uh, look at that there's a little uh, shaggy mane growing there that's cool um, this thing froze solid in here over the winter at least several times and I was certain that these guys were dead because I just kind of had the impression that they were you know not super cold hardy but if you look there's mature live worms here you know and not a small number of them I mean it's not teeming and we haven't fed this lately Actually, we haven't fed it this spring yet, but it's not teeming with worms the way it was last year, but there's a lot of mature worms in here, you know, sexually mature worms that uh, are fully capable of producing cocoons, you know, and I bet there's plenty of youngsters in here too, you know, so there's a lot of worms in here. They're much cold hardier than I was kind of led to believe. So that's really good news. There's a cocoon. Actually, that's an empty cocoon. That's cool. So, um, I'm, there's one. There's a cocoon right there. Don't know if getting that in the camera. Um, yeah, so, and one of the other things is I was feeding them the fresh cow manure you know kind of straight out of the dispenser so to speak last year just to see uh, how they would respond and they really like it um, which makes sense when you think about uh, what worms actually eat is sort of the bacterial soup inside the sort of uh, food matrix right and uh, Basically, cow manure is just sort of bacterial soup and ground-up grass clippings, really. So it's it's kind of like a ready-made food source for them. And they just dive right into it, like very, very, very fresh cow manure. They, they you know, if you put a fresh cow pie right here, like steaming hot cow pie, and come back the next day, it will be full of worms. So, uh... There, you know, you see different things online about and on, you know, sort of vermicomposting sites that, you know, some about what these worms will tolerate. But I read some, you know, scientific papers from, you know, research done in India and Pakistan and stuff, and they are they feed Asinia fetida, Asinia fetida fresh manure in those studies and they do very well on it you know so it was something I was willing to try because like I don't produce a lot of you know we don't produce a lot of uh, food waste enough to uh, you know feed a huge amount of worms but you know we have a lot of cow manure that we could directly feed to the worms and like in terms of like you know keeping manure management in an organic and low-tech way it seems like a great possibility and so I'm really excited about it and I'm, I'll, I'm gonna expand the worms and um, build a larger outdoor system and probably we won't be doing the indoor bin type thing anymore just because it's not really uh, our style but um, I, I'm really impressed with them and uh, you know the hardiness especially the cold hardiness and the growth rates and the reproductive rates I mean there's nothing bad to say about these worms I mean you can tell that worm did not mature this spring that worm I mean it just turns spring you know these are some big mature worms and they survived at least temperatures below this entire mass freezing solid so that's that's awesome and uh, I'm probably gonna move these guys into that outdoor bin just because it was so successful I was surprised 
and we don't need we don't you know we didn't do any indoor vermicomposting and we don't need an indoor worm bin now so um seems like the outdoor bin is where it's at so yeah that's just a little bit about my worm composting adventures i mean we're really just getting into it and um i'm hoping to learn more all right